Rams in Kansas City. Hi, Dan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Well, uh, Dave, um, I am in a quandary. Okay. Uh, my wife and I married each other. Um, That's always a good years. thing to do. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, Excellent. Yes. Yes, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, we got married, uh, it'll be two years in July, and both of us have never been married before, but we had dated a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, we've been looking for a home here, and these prices have just gotten insane. Um, and what we're having a major disagreement about Uh, and I mean a major disagreement about, is how to pay for this. I, uh, she said that when we got married, now this this is a conversation that I don't remember all of the particular details, but she said that our original plan was that she sells her house. I sell mine, of which I already have, and I moved in with with her in her place, which already has $100,000 worth of debt. I married a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt too. Uh, so, so she also says that we agreed when, before we got married, that I would sell my farm property, which is a quarter section out in Western Kansas. Um, that's been in family hands for 130 years. Now I don't exactly remember that part of the conversation, but I know that when we sell that, it's going to involve capital gains taxes, pretty substantial ones. My accountant says somewhere between oh forty to fifty thousand dollars combined, federal and state. So I propose to my wife this: that we keep the property, still buy a house because we can we can cash flow. Uh, with the wheat sales, about another five six hundred dollars worth of payments above and beyond of what we do now. Then we take the Milo money, and we bank that for the next five years, which is when I plan to retire. And then we'll have at least that money to pay most, if not all, of these capital gains taxes, and then. We sell the property at that point and retire the mortgage. She says, no, sell it now, and, you know, then buy something cash. What do you think? Hmm. So I'm hearing that either way the property is sold, it's just a matter of now or five years from now. Well, un- unless we can find a way or buy a property that we can, that we can, because she's okay, agreed let's to stop come a up second. with a Let's stop a second, because yeah. this property, you know, you outlined a very emotional thing that's been in your family for 130 some odd years. 100, 130, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, all math aside and even marital arguments aside, um, are you going to sell this property ever? Well, at some point, because she has no children and I have no children. We've never been married before and we have no family. Um, really? That, none of that enters into it? Yeah. I mean, well, at, at It's going to leave the family. You're I, saying it's going to leave the family when you die anyway? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So why not go ahead and enjoy the fruits of some of it now? What's it worth if you sold it now? Around three hundred. Okay. All right. And what's wrong with your wife's current house as a place for y'all just to stay? Well, it's it's a it's a two bedroom townhouse, and um, and it has one bath. And and I've shared. I love my wife dearly, but <laughs> I've shared a bath with her for almost two years and have not enjoyed the process. Okay. So uh, so you guys, had, what's the townhouse worth? The townhouse is worth about 180 190 And with her, um, with all the, we've had our. In, what what our is owed on it? Is anything owed on it? 100000 owed on it? About 100000 yeah. Okay. And so it's going to clear about eighty, and you got about 300 over there. And have you got money left over from the sale of your house also? 110 Okay. All right, and so 
you could buy a two hundred thousand dollar property and pay cash for it. Well, we could, but you can't get really much in Kansas City, or mm-hmm. particularly in Johnson County where we live. You can't get much for for two hundred. Let me flip this around. What's the alternative? You've created this. What I would say is a highly complex, and I moved here from a farming community. A uh, complex the the grains have to hit has to rain right we've got to get the subsidy in you've laid out a complex matrix for five years from now we could x y and z yeah why that, not i mean that's in gymnastics a lot, life's a lot simpler just sell it now yeah so. and a capital gain sounds like a distraction to me if if i didn't have you know, all this other stuff in this conversation i would tell you to sell the property now pay the capital gains sell the townhouse and go buy a property that both of you love. Now, what's bothering me about that is that the two of you, after two years, can't two two old dogs trying to learn new tricks working together is tougher than than two young pups doing that. And so, um, I, I I'm a whole lot I'm ninety percent concerned in this conversation about the fact that you two can't resolve this argument, and I'm only ten percent concerned with how you resolve it. Yeah. Um. I mean, to the point that she's even saying you said things you don't remember saying. That's weird. Well, um, she's a pretty powerful personality, and there are times during our long relationship, dating and married, that I have found it um, more... And I might have agreed to that. I don't. My memory you, isn't. You, what bad. you're saying is you caved. Well, I have found that that sometimes it's better, or at least in the short term, it's to better cave. to placate her than to keep keep trying to res- resolve the issue. Okay, that's my problem. Okay, John, help me here. Yeah, because so- my problem is. I don't give a rip if you sell the farm or not, but the problem is if you sell the farm and go do exactly what she wants, this is going to come up again. Or if you lie to her in order to get through a conversation, all you're doing is kicking the can down the road for a larger explosion when it happens. And now you've drawn lines and the part that you've you've drawn battle lines. I've got my plan, well she's got her plan, and man, this just doesn't end well. It ends unnecessarily bad particularly if both of your plans end up with selling the farm. And so I would love to see you circle back to her and say, all right, so I've never done this before. I've never had a marital marital spat like this before with 130-year-old property. I'm asking for a mulligan. Can we start the conversation anew? What do we want to look at? You're talking about she brought into debt and I married it. Y'all are all on the same page. You're just having to practice doing life together after a long time of not having to do life together. Expect there to be stumbles. Be curious about them. Don't get angry and frustrated about them. And always circle back and say, hey, we need to do this one over again. And this is one y'all need to do over again. Because what you're fighting about is, do we want to have a pretty nice house for the rest of our life just to ride or die with until this thing's over? Which could be a lot of fun. But if you get bogged up in the mechanics of how we're going to get there, man, then you're just If gonna, you get bogged up in... Just, Silly. My wife, I caved, and she held me to it, and I sold a 130-year-old family property when I didn't want to just to make her happy in this house. Then the first time she whines about the wallpaper, you're going to go bananas. <laughs> you're going to burn the house down out of spite. I might know somebody that did this, so I'm just telling <laughs> you, okay? I, I'm, I'm, I, I've got this friend, right? I've so, got um, this buddy named yeah. Rave Damsey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you guys need to work on the relationship part of this, and then the actual mechanics of how to do the deal will be a whole lot easier. That's what's scaring John and I. We're looking at each other while you're telling all this.